school. And they all, they all gravitated to Rogers. They were all Rogers. Hey everybody, I'm Dana Bentley from Bentley Strum Shop here in Fresno, California. With me is Jim Ganguglia. Um, Jim was a Rogers and Dorsey for 30 some odd years, plus part of the research and development team from the mid 70s to the early 80s. Uh, this is a first in a series of videos we're gonna do on the discussion of Rogers, drums, and hardware then and now. Uh, today's topic are some of the Rogers bass drum pedals from the Swivelmatics to the Rocket pedal to the Big R pedal. Uh, we're going to discuss some of the adjustments, um, features, and technical aspects of the pedal. Um, some of the finite aspects might be a little boring uh, to a few of you. It might be boring as hell, but uh, we feel it's important to discuss the architecture of the pedal because ultimately it led to being Buddy Rich's favorite bass drum pedal and thousands of drummers across the world. Uh, in fact, my first drum set was, was a mix match kit, half Crown, half Ludwig, some Ludwig hardware, but it had a Rogers Solomatic bass drum pedal. And it was spectacular, and I really enjoyed that. But um, as you're growing as a kid and upgrading, uh, I traded it off, and I didn't really realize how great it was until I traded it off for something else. So. Um, should we get started, Jim? Sure. Yeah, so sure. you wanted to talk about this big R pedal right here that came into the shop not long ago. Well, we, had, we were talking about some different things, and you said that you'd had a... I was looking for some, some pieces and parts. Sure. Uh, and you said, well, I've got a whole bunch of pieces and parts. Let me give them to you. Yeah. And then um, uh, you can go through them and see what I have and what I don't sure. have. So... When I got all of this stuff, this pedal, these three pedals here, this one, this one, and, and this footboard were part of this stuff, and I was shocked at the total abuse sure. of, this, of this stuff. And the rocket pedal, this is, this is a rocket pedal uh, all in one piece in good condition. The rocket pedal, the first, to my knowledge, the first adjustable beater uh, control right. was right here. And it's two-piece sand casting with a bunch of little grooves in there that you can turn and, and, and get the, the beater ball distance, whatever you want to do, which is amazing to me. And, I, and I'd never seen this pedal um, until I got to Rogers. I, w right. I wasn't even sure... I, that this pedal even existed. Wow. But I was always always impressed with that. And then when we went through the, the pile of stuff, mm -hmm. whoever had this pedal. There's half of it there, right? We don't have yeah, the board, right? Lost the screw. There's a screw in the center of here. Right. Which holds both of these halves together. You loosen this screw, adjust the beater ball distance, right. and then tighten the screw. Well Somehow that screw disappeared, and whoever had this pedal drilled another hole in here. Oh, look at that! Yeah. And put and put this bolt and nut through here instead of going to a hardware store and getting a quarter twenty bolt <laughs> of any kind right, and right. putting it back together. They chose to drill this out, which this thing just flopped wow. around. I don't even know how they played it. Yeah. It was the most amazing thing. So that was number one. And this was number two. This footboard, the whoever owned this lost the bolt in here. The key screw adjustment, right? Right. Yeah. And then behind that, there's a little square flat piece of metal that that screws into. Mm -hmm. When you loosen that, you can adjust the pedal either short or long, however you want to do it. Right. Tighten it back down. And I play the, the solid footboard. Okay. I've never been able to play a, a split footboard. I don't know what it is, but I can't. Anyway, so when I saw this, I freaked out. So because <laughs> they lost this bolt here, right. what they did was they drilled two holes down in here and put other bolts in here to hold this thing together. I'm thinking we got the same previous owner. You were drilling all these holes Well, here, that, right? could, that could very well be. And on top of that, there are two cracks in here, uh, and this footboard is really, this, this 
arc here is really severe where they started to where they started to wear this thing. And uh, the, the big problem was that late 70s, the abuse started with real heavy playing rock and roll sure, stuff sure. happened. That's where the big R pedal came from. Gotcha. So it was now, developed because of rock and roll and it, these yes, type of pedals weren't... They, they just couldn't handle it. Yeah. And then this one. Now this pedal is the most bizarre thing I have ever seen in my life. First of all, the connecting rod is bent. Yeah, As you can that. see, this connecting rod sure. comes out and does a left turn. <laughs> Whoever the guy was, at least he found a quarter 20 bolt, but it was so long that uh, it hit the bottom of the footboard. You can see indentations wow, in that. here. Then he lost the screw that holds the strap on the bass drum pedal. Right. So he found this screw, which is like a wood screw. It's that, that's, not, a, that's a wood screw right there. You know, and he put that on there, but he didn't. He couldn't tighten it down because it was too long. So it was allowing the bass drum pedal. You can see the underside of this that's all chewed out in here. Yeah. And you can see the uh, uh, the clamp for the counter hoop. Sure. It's all beat. Now, yeah, because it was going could, down so far and hitting that thing. Right. How you could play that and not feel that you've got metal hitting metal is beyond me. Well, that's I, rock and roll, right? Uh, <laughs> I don't even know how it even hit the bass drum pit head. Have no clue. Wow. And, and I thought to do this thing, we would show some of these idiotic things here uh, because it's just... When you're in a manufacturing setup, you're trying to make this stuff perfect so you think that you can compensate for any kind of abuse, well, no way in hell no. <laughs> can, you, can you do that. You right. just cannot. There's somebody that's going to one-up you no matter what you do. Sure. I mean, it's, it's insane. So anyway, I thought we would start with that and from there lead into a couple of these other things and, and hopefully uh, uh, take some of this stuff into consideration. Sure, sure. So we want to show you a few of the features of the Rogers Swivelmatic pedal, uh, most notably the name Swivelmatic. So you can actually swivel the footboard at a different position to make it more comfortable to play based on your seating position. So by loosening this screw, you can actually move the footboard from left to right. And you can lock it in back with the drum key. On the bottom, it actually has three positions to remove this and put it in and each one gives you a wider uh, sway from left to right and so I'm going to remove the screw so you can actually see how far you can actually potentially move it from left to right and still lock it in and play your bass drum. A super great feature. Um, Another one is the height adjustment of the pedal. So depending if you're playing an 18-inch bass drum to a 26, you can adjust the whole beater height. And you do that by loosening these two calf screws. And you just adjust this down and up, depending on which size bass drum you'd like to play. The Rogers company made a variety of slight changes and upgrades uh, over the years and we're not going to show you each and every one of them but just a few of them uh, to see how they improved this little matted pedal as time moved on so we're going to get to those in a second but a few more features here on this pedal um, you can actually adjust the beater stroke angle by loosening this right here so you can have that at an infinite position it's not ratcheted which is great quick and easy and then one of the greatest things is spring tension, which is right here. So all you have to do is just lean over, adjust the tension, quite easy. You don't have to get down in here like everybody else's pedal or underneath with a screwdriver. And then we have what we can call a docking station. Uh, this actually is this plate here that would actually attach to a bass drum hoop. And that would just stay permanently on your bass drum hoop and that eliminated it from getting all chewed and marred up 
And then once it was on your bass drum hoop, you would just leave it there, and then you would slide your pedal up into that, and it just locks right in. You can see a couple little notches here for that. And then you would just tighten it down here, and it would stay put. We also have a couple different uh, spikes on both sides of the pedal. This enable you, if you're a heavy player, to put it into the carpet or your gig rug and your pedal would stay put. On this particular pedal, we have one of the really cool uh, reversible bass drum beaters. You don't even have to take the beater out of the pedal. Spring loaded, you just push, twist, and you get the flat plastic and then back to the felt. This is the adjustable footboard model, and a little bit newer. Uh, don't worry about what we got going on up here. We're going to talk about that later in another video. Um, so their swivel on this one, they eliminated the three hole positions over there, and this is just totally infinite, which totally makes sense. You actually got a, a greater degree of range from left to right. Also with this footboard, it's, it's adjustable, so by loosening this screw right here, you can actually lengthen the footboard based on um, your foot size. So, um, what an ingenious idea. I mean, it's incredible, really. You tighten that back down. And then also, you can adjust right here by loosening this screw right here. Which is hidden right underneath there. You can also adjust front and back positioning, which will also give you a different feel when you play the pedal based on the cam. And we'll go into that in just a little bit. Here's the underneath version so you can see that. They made a little bit of a change here for the spike. It's right here on the side. Uh, uh, and also a quick release to go under the hoop. Nice lever, which you saw that ran into the uh, uh, you know, late 70s, all the, way, all the way into the 80s, if you will. Adjustment over here on the side. Very similar. This one happens to have uh, a different style of wing nut on it. So Jim, how did you get involved with the Rogers Drum Company and, and the drums? Well, I was uh, I went to grad school uh, at Indiana State University in Terre Haute, Indiana, and the percussion the previous percussion instructor was named Don Kennedy, mm -hmm. and about two years prior to me getting there, Don went to work for CBS. Oh, okay. And at that point. Uh, Rogers was still in Dayton, Ohio. They hadn't moved to Fullerton yet. Right. And a couple of times while I was in grad school, Don visited Indiana State because he was the percussion instructor oh, prior to interesting. Neil Flegel, who okay. was the percussion instructor when I was there. And we'd met and talked. And um, I, I don't think I was even playing Rogers at that point. I, I was just yeah. a goofball percussion kid. Sure, you know. out from California. Right, right. So, uh, so that was my introduction to Don. Okay. And in the, in the future, uh, when I got back out to California, I looked him up at one point in time, and, and uh, it's because of wanting to get some parts for Swivelmatic uh, 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 double tom holders. Okay. Uh, for the drum set because I had I wanted to make a triple tom holder. Wow! And okay. they and they didn't have triple tom holders at that point. Sure. So so, but they were working on and I still think this they were working on uh, uh, memory lock uh -huh. at the time and I said I want to do X Y Z and I want to put a triple tom holder sure. together wow. and I think they were going yeah go ahead go ahead and do that because we're coming up with with uh, uh, memory lock, memory lock wow. so we don't care what you do. Anyway, yeah. Don gave me some collet noses, mm -hmm. and 
my family was in the trucking business for 80 years. Wow. wow. And so we had a full shop. So I would go out, I would get pieces and parts, uh, and I would go out to my dad's welder, and I would say, put this together for me. Wow, wow. And he'd put it together for me. Incredible. And, and you have... You have the two triple tom holders with the collet noses on them. Right, right. And when we do the drum set thing, which sure. is hopefully the next video, we'll get yeah, all we'll that. We'll go stuff into some up. other unique prototype stuff that yeah. you haven't seen before. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, so, so you met Don, yeah. So that's I met Don, and then I went through grad school and went out, uh, went back to California and started doing some playing and blah blah blah. And anyway, ended up calling Don to get some parts. And uh, uh, which he was very happy to do. Again, which is which is reminds me of when things are small. You have you have associations with people that now the drum companies are gigantic. Oh sure, yeah. You don't know you don't know who you're dealing with. Who's at the top of the pile? You don't know anything. Right. The, the thing that I really like is DW. Yeah. Don Lombardi, if you have something to say that he thinks is important, you can talk to the guy who owns the company. Right, right. You know, and and there are very few companies like that ever. And in the trucking business, we used to have customers that were locally based, even though their their corporate headquarters was God only knows where. Right. But we had people close that we could talk to. And over the course of the 30 years with them, the companies got larger and larger and sold to, to uh, 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 global companies. Sure. The people that I talked to were in Tampa or in Israel or God only knows, and all I knew was a voice. Yeah, right. No, no communication, no personal communication, which to me is awful. Yeah. Absolutely awful. Anyway, Rogers was really, really nice to talk to. Mm -hmm. You could talk to Don. Uh, Roy Burns was working. Yeah. Roy, <laughs> Roy, and and I, I'm really sorry that he passed away yeah. because Roy yeah, was was a gem. Pretty interesting guy. Yeah. He was he was really short and to the point. He didn't. He didn't mince words. No, there's no BS with Roy yeah, Burns. Right? Yeah, yeah, and and uh, so we talk about certain things, and the and the the thing that I wanted to do when I got to Rogers, uh, they they use me as an artist consultant, not for the reason that they use anybody else as right. a player. Sure, I, I'm not a I'm not a drum solo player. I can play styles and that right. kind of stuff. Never, never played, never played solos, you know, maybe traded some fours, but that's about it. But I showed a big interest in the mechanical apparatus, how it functioned. Sure. And none of their, none of their uh, artists ever even mentioned how it functioned, you know. Sure. So anyway, that's, that's how I got involved in this thing. And the first the first thing that I modified was the bass drum pedal. And this is a solid footboard. Okay. Yeah. All right. And the big problem with a solid footboard is that there is a step between here, let me get my pedal. Sure. There is a step right here. Okay. And the and the footboard Go straight up. The, the footboard doesn't have this. This is my idea. The boat portion. The, the the step in the footboard. Oh, I see. Okay, There's gotcha. a there is a there is a two hundred thousandths distance between the top of the heel plate and the top of the footboard. Okay. All right. There's a two hundred thousandths difference in the top of the footboard and or the top of the heel plate and the mm -hmm. top of the footboard. I see. All right. So I went to my dad's and what was happening was my shoes at that point in time, leather soles, sure. heels and soles. And if you got a shoe that the very front edge of the heel was a right. little high, ah. when you put it on here, you would feel this 
right. The, the footboard would actually come away from your shoe. It would chatter on there a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Wow, wow. No, a lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a a right. lot. And okay. I, I suppose it could catch right here, too. Um, well, this doesn't get far enough. Okay, all right. So, so I went to my dad's welder, and I said, I need a piece of plate. Could you weld? We have any aluminum out here. Yeah. So we searched around and found a flat piece of aluminum. He cut the shape out and then welded it on here, and then I put it on the footboard, or on the heel plate. So you can see we took up that gap, yeah, gotcha. and that solved the problem. Wow, wow. Okay? fantastic. Except this thing is heavy. Yeah. I mean, it is really heavy. And so when I started working it with Rogers, I just got on the milling machine, and that was another slick thing about working at Rogers. I had access to a full bottle shop. Wow. Which was like being in hog heaven. I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, we had a Bridgeport milling machine that was sensational. So this is a state-of-the-art machine. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was like this huge etch-a-sketch. Ah. See, because you had to work it going both the right. front, back, side to side. Wow. Which I had a little bit of dyslexia, so I could <laughs> never remember which was front, you know. <laughs> I, carved, I carved some... Well, you'll see right here, yeah. this thing went a little awry right here, you okay, know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So, anyway, uh, but this was still heavy. So then the thought process was, well, we'll take two pedals, we'll cut the back part of this and weld the back part and the front part together I and see. make that step, mm -hmm. and, then, and then so you accomplish that. And so that works great. The only problem is that I don't think that CBS would have ever continued this footboard. It was too late. They were already working on the big R pedal. Well, that before yeah, anything. yeah, they were already doing that. But I don't know how many of these things they sold. I, I don't have any idea about that. So I'm not really sure if they would have even continued this gotcha. or not. Versus now, the, the traditional non-adjustable footboard. Correct. So yeah, be. split footboard. Yeah. So, so that was my first endeavor mm -hmm. with that. Now, um, I had and I had I had done this before I got to Rogers. When I got to Rogers, the other thing uh, before we do that, sure, I, there was a video out. Oh, in fact, it's probably still out there. Uh, some gentleman was talking about the bearings, sure, in the in the in the bearing housing. And he was talking about how uh, Rogers, uh, uh, CBS was t trying to cut costs and cheapen the pedal in the process. Sure. And, and was talking about the needle bearings. Mm -hmm. Now, you'll see here that we have two style needle bearings, a wide needle bearing sure. and a narrow needle bearing. Now, the wide needle bearing has continuous rollers all the way around the inside. We'll get a close-up of this in just a minute. So, continuous, almost like a roller coaster, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. And the narrow one? The, the narrow one is a, a caged bearing. In other words, there's a cage inside of there, and the bearings are like every other space all the way around the inside. Oh, interesting. And... and uh, they may be less expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. The problem is, and where the problem lies with this combination of going from the wide to the narrow sure. is the fact that the needles are like about three-eighths of an inch long inside of there, mm -hmm. and they're side by side. Sure. So the shaft is sitting on a lot more bearings. Right. And a lot longer bearings, mm -hmm. which spreads the weight of the shaft out over a wider part of the bearings. Wow. Okay. Okay. Now, the needle bearings that are narrow, now the needle is only about an eighth of an inch long, mm -hmm. give or take, and there are less of them. Right. So now that shaft is sitting on lesser bearings, narrower. It puts a lot more pressure on the shaft. Right. The problem is that the shafts were mild steel, mm -hmm. and the bearings, the needles, are hardened steel. So the mild steel shaft is going to get the shaft. <laughs> you know, right. the mild steel shaft is cannot handle the the bearings that are hardened. 
it, it'll just wear point. that shaft down. So they should have made the shaft denser and harder to, to a degree. They should have, they sh when they went to this bearing, they mm -hmm. should have gone to a hardened shaft. I see. And that would have never happened. Yeah. And I, I just went out, uh, I just got them yesterday. Yeah. Uh, I had shafts made that are hardened. Okay. And I just put it in a pedal uh, yesterday. And um, so we'll see. Yeah. I'll we'll just have yeah. to play them and, and find out um, how they work. Yeah, see if it's smoother or faster. Well, here's another thing. In, in going through this thing, and in my tenure with, with Rogers, I had a whole bunch of things that were going on. Not only, not only did... Uh, I, I did nothing with the bearings. Mm -hmm. At that point in time, there were no issues right. with bearings. There was an issue, however, with the spring. And as you can see on this pedal, okay. the springs are, the old springs were three P springs. Each right. hook is a piece, mm -hmm. and the body of the spring is a piece. Yeah, so one, two, and three. Correct. Gotcha. Okay. The problem is that the springs, metal against metal, would squeak mm. in here. Right. So as you're playing a gig, you'd start to hear this thing, so you'd reach down and twist this. Give it a twist, get it off of that point where it was... Squeaking. And sure. then, it would, then it would go away for a while, and pretty soon you'd have to reach Because that down. suspends 360 on those balls that are holding it in there. Right, okay. right. What a drag, huh? Did you do that oh. a few times in your lifetime? Oh, yeah. Probably, probably a million or so. <laughs> so the first thing that I did was I, I, I got a one-piece spring. Mm -hmm. Okay, I decided that we needed a one-piece spring sure. to, to do away with this issue. Mm -hmm. The next thing was that this bushing right here is aluminum. So now you have an aluminum bushing on a steel mm. bolt, right. metal against metal, you can't lubricate that enough. Right. And it's just going to wear down? It's, yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, so what I did was I went to a Delron, a Delrin, sorry, bushing, which okay. is like this. Sure. It's a plastic. Right. And even, even so, uh, the, the, uh, let me, let me, Back up one step. Sure. This bearing housing mm -hmm. has ball bearings in it. Okay. That was that was my the spring and the shaft mm -hmm. or, and the bearing housing were the two issues that I went first. First thing I did was got a bearing housing. We knocked the bearings out, and they were the wide ones. Okay. Yeah. And we we drilled out and put uh, needle or ball bearings in there that were a half inch. Outside diameter, or okay. five eighths, sorry, five eighths, five eighths half inch uh, outside diameter. As, um, where's your key? Yeah, so I think it's right here, Jim. There you go. Let me let me peel this off. Right sure. Here. As you'll see here, the bearing housing comes mm -hmm. in, it comes down, and it comes down again. There's a step. Right. In there, then it comes back up. So this uh, this screw on the uh, spring adjustment arm mm -hmm. tightens in that slot, so it can't sure. come out. Correct. All right. Well, the problem is, I was under the impression that that this shaft, I mean, this area in here, mm -hmm. was so thin. Once you bored this out to put a five eighths inch uh, outside diameter ball bearing in there that that when you screwed down in there if you tightened it down at all you would distort or wear through that wall possibly right yeah. so I went back to my welder and we filled in that slot and built it up ah. okay and it's on it's on this pedal right here okay this is this is the animal here and and um, to get rid of that to, to give us more body. Sure. So uh, we had plenty of we had plenty of metal here, but on this side I was afraid that there wouldn't be enough. Right. So we we filled in that slot and um, uh, put the bearings, wow. uh, put the ball bearings in here. Mm -hmm. Now uh, then I put Delrin bushings in here, and so I did the old. 
and it stopped. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I was at the end of my tenure with Rogers, and I never, I never went any farther. Uh, I also put an offset uh, spring adjusting screw here. Yeah, look at that. Now, this was one of the first ones I made. Mm -hmm. And you can see it's really hardcore. What right. I did was I took a, a long quarter 20 bolt, mm -hmm. and I cut the head off of it, okay. and I put it on the vise and just beat the snot out of it with a hammer <laughs> and formed it right. to get an offset, flattened it out, drilled a hole in there so I could put another uh, cam bolt on there, and then put Delrin and Delrin. Mm -hmm. Delrin is really good when you have something that you want to take metal against metal away. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I went to the to the uh, to the shop. Rogers had a shop where uh, they made the counter hoops. Certain things that we made in house. Some stuff we we sent out to sure, have done. Sure. Uh, so I went to one of the guys and he said, "I said, man, we've got this this bushing here and it's just getting eaten up." And he suggested Delrin. Wow. So I went to the manufacturer of the, of the aluminum bushings, right. and I said, make me some out of Delrin. Right. So he did, and so I took them back and I put it on there, and I had a new spring, had this spring, and everything worked fine. There was no noise. You know, we, we mm -hmm. solved that problem. And then I left Rogers, so I never took it to the next step. And what the next step would have been is what I have here. I have a needle bearing in here. Ah. We took this bolt out, mm -hmm. and I must have had this done. I must have been thinking about this because I found a small needle bearing and a couple bolts that I actually had turned down. Oh, interesting. The fifth so, so, and I've got a bunch of them at home. So I, I started the concept but never finished it. Anyway, so what I did here lately, I just went out and bought some needle bearings. Mm -hmm. The problem is, the Delrin bushings, uh, let, me, let me take this one apart, sure. And the old aluminum bushings have a groove in them, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. So there's a groove there that this spring sits in. Okay. So that means that that thing can't move. Right. Well, on this particular uh, bushing, uh, mm -hmm. uh, this, this, sorry, this uh, bearing, I just hooked the spring over the top of the bearing, and it has a tendency to walk a little bit. All right. So at this point, I've got some fiber washers that won't allow that, that spring hook to move all the way over and rub against the, the bearing cam, sure. or the spring cam. Okay? Uh, and now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find something to either press fit over there, which would then mean that I would have to have a spring with a bigger hook on it. Right. So we're, we started this whole R&D yeah. process over again. Yeah, yeah. You know, I went so far because what happened was when I would push down on the pedal, even with the Delrin bushings in here, mm -hmm. it wouldn't do this. It wouldn't keep, yeah. It wouldn't keep, keep oscillating. Rocking. Sure, sure because there was a little bit too much friction. These, these cam bolts were never polished to the point to allow for, for free movement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and I don't know if they could have ever been polished enough. Uh, the next step, I like the, I like the offset uh, spring adjusting screw because then you can line up the pedal. No, that's, that's genius. Yeah, you just get a straight fulcrum all the way down. Right, right. So anyway, uh, that's basically was the a lot of the stuff that I that I had done with the pedal. None of which ever got to the pedal. Sure. You know? Yeah. So this is around 1980ish. This is yeah. You know. The 79, 79, 80, 78, 79, 80. Yeah. And and. Uh, uh, somehow I ended up with a bunch of the drawings, and you have one that says, uh, not for production. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Big stamp. Boom. Sure. Not for, not for production. And, and it's really sad. 
I, I, we could have done we could have done a lot of a, a, a lot of good with mm -hmm. with this combination, and uh, and of course they shut down Rogers uh, in 1984. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if this would have ever gotten that far. Right. Right. You know, and uh, uh, if anybody's out there and and. Uh, who knows? We might get, be uh, getting into a scenario where we jazz up drum sets. Sure, band. sure. Yeah, you know? we're, we're taking it from 1980, fast forward to 2018, right? And taking it to the next level, right? With some of these ideas, for sure. So anyway, it was an interesting scenario when I went to the spring manufacturer. I went to the guy, the guys who made these springs, these sure. three piece springs, and I said, "We got to get rid of the three piece springs." And now they're, they're in Southern California, probably. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, uh, because I'm in R and D, and one would think, well, he's an R and D; he must be an engineer. Well, not even close. Okay. <laughs> so I went up to the I went up to the spring uh, manufacturing place, and I said, uh, "We've got to get rid of this three speed P spring. I want a spring that's the same length mm -hmm. from the inside of of, the, of both hooks." Right. And. Uh, that's probably as close to the same size wire diameter of, of the outside because on a three-piece spring, these this portion of the spring is of no consequence to the spring. Right. As the, as those winds get smaller, mm -hmm. they don't they don't help the spring any. Okay, so you have probably 12 active coils here and you've got 14 active coils here mm -hmm. and to tell you the truth on those older springs right. there are actually more active coils but the fact that the coil diameter is smaller uh, you have to when the coil gets smaller they get stronger and mm -hmm. stiffer mm -hmm. so what you end up having to do is make a longer spring I see. All right, so this spring actually had 18, 17 or 18 active coils, mm -hmm. and then you still had the the three or four coils that taper down. Sure. But, uh, so what ended up happening was the guy said, okay, so they took the wire size, they took everything, and, and I, told, I showed them the kind of hook that I wanted. Right. Zap. Oh. They made that. Wow. And they made a couple other ones that were smaller wire diameter and smaller body diameter mm -hmm. that that didn't make it. One of the one of the strange things about the Rogers uh, uh, spring adjusting arm mm -hmm. is that the distance from the center of the shaft to the bottom here is like four four and an eighth inches, and on most other pedals it's a minimum of four and three eighths. Hmm. So you've got more distance here, you can have a longer spring. If you look at all of these springs right. on the variety of the foot pedals that sure. are out there of all the other manufacturers, back to the big R here, yeah. You'll see you'll see that, that the distance between here and here is greater and they've got more spring length. Mm -hmm. And then they've got that big hook that the spring hooks over that actually screws into the to the uh, the spring cam. Right. You know, uh, and and when you're when you're dealing with a shorter distance, everything has to get compressed. Right. You know. So anyway, that's that's how this this spring uh, came to be, and the hooks have to be dead right on as far as they can they can't be twisted. Sure. I, because what that does, the spring adjusting screw on a Rogers. That, that hole is not round. It's got two flat spots, mm -hmm. and so that screw will twist maybe just a hair mm -hmm. because the tolerances in there can't be absolutely perfect. Right. And, and when, you get, when you get those, those, uh, those hooks a little bit off-center, then they throw things in a bind, and they stop things even more. Mm -hmm. That was the only decent thing about the three-piece spring is that you could sure you could get it, it is, you could take those you could take these uh, you could you could put anything anywhere and and take the pressure out of there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's that's. Um, but ultimately, it was noisy, so it had to go. Oh yeah, sure, yeah, and I think and I and I. 
we got the spring, same spring tension. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got everything here and, and minimized, took out all the noise potential in, in this area here. However, we still had a, a uh, problem with freedom of the, of the, of the, of movement. Right. Okay. So, uh, in 78 and 79, I managed to get about 90% of the, of the problems solved here. Mm -hmm. And to my way of thinking, when you, when you step down on a pedal and you take your foot off of it and it does that, people go, oh, that pedal is really free and that's going to make me play faster. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I mean, if the pedal, if you have having trouble pushing down on the pedal, I can go, eh, sure. the pedal is the problem. Right. Um, but the way that pedal worked before, it, was it as free as, as any other pedal? No, but I don't know. I mean, Buddy Rich played that pedal pretty fast. But he did, and and he had he had a nylon, uh, he had a, a an aluminum bushing here. Right. He had needle bearings here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just an a stock pedal. Yeah. Yeah. A an interesting thing that uh, on one of Roy Burns' um, interviews, he said uh, he was asked the question, "What do you think is the is the greatest uh, advancement in drumming?" And he thought for a couple seconds, and he said. Drummer's feet. Mm. Now I played double bass drum for a long time. Yeah. Uh, not. Not lickety split. I just played patterns. Sure. With them. And some of the things that I'm hearing now out there with with two bass drums is scary. It's amazing, isn't it? It's yeah. just. It's absolutely astronomical. I'm. Uh, uh, I'll mention one player, Thomas Lang. Yeah. Wow. With the with the double double bounce sure. bass drum double things. strokes oh. triple strokes yeah insanity absolute insanity. So ultimately, the Rogers pedal with all these incredible features was really a state of the art pedal uh, for many many decades. And now you're taking it from 1980 when you left and making improvements on it today. Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, I never set up. One of the things that I came up with, uh, actually before I started working with Rogers, was Rogers Marketing named it the, the Studio 10, mm. which came about right after Hal Blaine started doing the, the Octoplus, right. the multiple tom thing. And I liked that concept, but obviously I couldn't have tom stretched out in a long line because sure. a lot of the times... Uh, uh, I was playing in small confined spaces and you couldn't have this monstrosity that was eight foot wide, you know. <laughs> right. And, and so, move it around. And, right? Yeah, right. So I ended up, and at that point they were all concert toms, mm -hmm. which was great because you could nest them. Mm -hmm. So you could go out with, a, with a, I had seven toms, you could go out with seven toms with two bass drum cases. Wow. And you just nested all the toms yeah, in the, with yeah. the bass drum because the Swivelmatic didn't have any tubes that went down through the bass drum. Sure, and, and we'll show that on one of our next videos, right. the development of the Studio 10 kit. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so anyway, I, I forgot where I was going. With That's that. right, but, the pedal and, and uh, yeah. you know, all its features and but, also taking care of it, right? Right, and, and uh, you end up with, with this kind of stuff when you don't take care of things. Sure, sure. And and if you have a problem and you've got a and you've got a great drum shop with a great owner like you here who understands this stuff, um, uh, you bring it to them immediately. If you can't do it, take it to somebody who can fix it. Sure. Don't be stupid and let it get to this point because the person gets a bad taste in their mouth because this product supposedly is not working. When in fact it's the player, not sure. the product, right. and they may lose interest in that name and go to something else. Sure. And and that's sad. Yeah. That's really sad. Yeah. Don't don't use a wood screw. Bring it in. We can fix your pedal. Yeah. Um, there's so many moving parts on any bass drum pedal today. So make sure you get a case for it. 
and, and protect it. It's, it's, it's like Roy Burns said, it's, uh, you know, one of the most important uh, achievements and improvements in drumming history uh, over the last 50, 60 years, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah, the hardware happened uh, in the memory lock when memory lock happened. Memory so, lock spurred all of that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And uh, um, the bass drum pedals, all of the pedals had, had ball bearings in them. Mm -hmm. Rogers was the only uh, a pedal that had needle bearings in it. And um, uh, I wanted to change that just because yeah. of that. Yeah. You, you didn't even have to play it. All you had to do was look at it, and your mind went, that's faster. Right. Absolutely. You know, and, and you didn't want to have anything make a person go, nope, I'm going here. Sure. You, 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 can't, you can't take that chance mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as a manufacturer. Right, right. You just cannot. So um, hopefully, hopefully we've solved some of the issues uh, uh, with some of the, with some of the, the uh, videos that are out there about the animal, mm -hmm. okay? Um, uh, right now, I, I, one, of the, one of the footboards that I've got, I'm taking over to a sandcaster, and I'm going to have him make some of these. And, uh, uh, and, and like I said, if anybody has any thoughts about upgrading their pedals, I'm sure that we could put your uh, uh, the, the store sure sure the we can store do that. Yeah. email address on there and if anybody if we get enough of them, uh, it'll cost me three thousand bucks to get a pattern made for this footboard to make them three at a time. Okay. The the single one that I'm going to go out and get is going to cost me fifty bucks. All right. We'll so start that's with one. Just yeah. that's one. Sure. So the. Uh, if there are enough people that, that have this footboard that want to switch it out, yeah. you know. And, and another thing that I did with this footboard that, that I forgot to mention right. was I modified the footboard. The, the, the height of it was, oh, yeah. was higher. So what I did was the shaft here, I lowered the position of the shaft, mm -hmm. cut out the bottom of the footboard so you could lower everything. I mean, in a production run, uh, we would have we would have completely redesigned all of this sure. stuff here, yeah. so you didn't have this big hole in the bottom. It, it looks a little little strange, but uh, it works fine. It's worked for forty years, right? You know, so um, but there were a lot of there were a lot of changes that we made to the pedal uh, that hopefully would have would have come into line more with the way the pedals. Other manufacturers' pedal feels, and as far as I'm concerned, the amount of of adjust the adjustability of this pedal mm -hmm. is the simplest with the most amount of adjustability right. of of all the pedals. Some of the new pedals are insane, yeah. you know, that they duplicate functions, mm -hmm. and and I'm going. Why are you duplicating functions and making more manufacturing problems? It right, right. Makes no sense to me. So anyway, uh, you can adjust the the distance that the beater ball has to travel to the head. You can adjust the spring. That's all you need. If you want, if you want to adjust the footboard, there are some solid footboards out there, but sure. they're not adjustable. Right. You know, if you play heel up all the time. You don't even need the back of the foot pedal. <laughs> right, right, sure, you're not touching it. Yeah. You're not. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I can't because because I like the way my foot feels and all of my foot is moving. Right. And and actually, if you play heel down, mm -hmm. you're actually helping this beater ball come back because when you when you lift your foot up, sure. you you can actually you can actually help that spring because mm -hmm. you're pushing here and you're taking some of the springs duty away from me pulling that thing back sure yeah you know so i know i know a lot of people I, I, a lot of people play play split footboard mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I ne I could never get used to it. Once I got once I started feeling the way this this thing worked. Even now, I'll, I'll, you'll loan me a pedal sure, to take sure, home with yeah. a split footboard. I play it, <laughs> you know. And I've even, I've even, uh, I bought Thomas a new pedal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I took the footboard off of this, put it on their pedal. Mm -hmm. uh, they're probably not, oh, will probably not be overwhelmed to hear that, but, but uh, their pedal feels great with this footboard. <laughs> <laughs> It feels it feels better to me than yeah. the split foot board. Yeah, I'm with you. You know. Wow. Well, thank you, Jim. We really appreciate well, it. Well, I, I, I hope I hope that we've solved some of the issues out there because because uh, I, I I don't want anybody bad mouthing this stuff because it stopped. It like I said, we had all of these things planned mm -hmm. for this pedal, which would have put it up a notch. Right. You know, and nobody, nobody has ever seen this until now. Wow, yeah. And and hopefully, hopefully, it'll people will go. Well, th life would have been a lot better had this product continue, uh, uh, yeah. continued. Yeah. yeah. And that's sad. Yeah. That's really sad. And that's that's another uh, discussion and topic for one of our videos too. Yeah. With CBS and everything. Yeah. And and I never spoke with a CBS person ever. Never. And uh, I just spoke with the marketing people. They never ever went to me and said, CBS said. Mm -hmm. It was always, hey, what can we do about this? Or I would go to them and I'd say, I want to, and they'd go, okay, go. Right, right. You know? Yeah. I, I mean, I would, I would have never thought to put something on the pedal that would cheapen the pedal. Okay. Yeah. Not even, not even for a minute. And, and Roy, in a couple of his conversations, uh, interviews said that that's why he left because they were they were they were trying to get him to do things that he didn't think were were good for the good for the product. Sure, sure. Yeah. You know, and and that was one really slick thing about Don Kennedy, Roy, mm -hmm. uh, two of the other people that we that I worked with was Greg Perry, who was in charge of the marching part right. of of Rogers, sure. which we'll do a sure. which we'll do a thing about that, and. One of the other guys that I went to, to school with, uh, Roger Garvin, was a percussionist. He was in undergrad school at, at uh, Indiana State when mm -hmm. I was in grad school. And they all, they all gravitated to Rogers. They were all Rogers loons. Yeah. yeah. You know? And, and uh, so, so everybody, everybody, it wasn't a job. It wasn't just a job. It was like they had a love for that thing, a passion. It, yeah, for right. The instrument. Yeah. And and that made all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. It it wasn't it wasn't well. I need a, I need a job, so I'll do that. Right, right. You know. Yeah. I mean, and and it was special that that couple years and that asso my association with Rogers was really special, mm -hmm. really special, man. I really appreciated those guys. Yeah. And and Roy. Especially, and I'm I, again. Yeah. I'm really sad. And uh, he wasn't. I went down to the Nam show, right. and I went to Aquarian booth, and he wasn't there. And and uh, I, I'm really sorry that he wasn't, because I would have sure. loved to talk with him for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was 40 years. Sure. I hadn't seen him. And and I, when I lived in LA, I went to Aquarian a couple times. Mm -hmm. And and spoke with him, but that's been years and years and years ago. And I, I wanted to, I wanted to say hello to him and and, and thank him for for sure. for the time we had together because yeah, it was yeah. it was special. Yeah. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us today uh, regarding Rogers drums then and now.